Glidefast and Ferricode on air. I'm Lauren Jankowski, the marketing manager here at Ferricode and Glidefast, and I'll be moderating today's webinar, New in Paris, Feature Deep Dive and Demo of Standard Ticket Page. Before we get started, we'd like to give you some background information on Glidefast and Ferricode. As sister companies, Glidefast and Ferricode both offer cutting edge technology services. Glidefast is a consulting firm dedicated exclusively to ServiceNow and was, honored to recent, and was honored to recently be named number 341 on the Inc. 5000 list of the fastest growing private companies in America. Ferricode provides technology services, managed services, and staff augmentation to federal, state, and local government organizations. Ferricode is proud to have partnerships with a variety of different technologies and recently achieved ServiceNow Elite Partner status. As a perk of attending today's webinar, we'll be giving away a $50 Visa gift card. We'll announce the winner at the end of today's session. So be sure to stay on for the whole webinar. I'm excited to hand things over to our presenters for today. David Arbor is a service delivery manager and senior architect here at Glidefast. He has over five years experience on the ServiceNow platform. He specializes, specializes in custom apps and portals with top of the line front end skills. Paul Group is a service delivery director here at Glidefast with over eight years of experience on the ServiceNow platform. Starting out as a ServiceNow customer, working as a help desk analyst, Paul has a range of knowledge across the entire platform. Now I'd like to hand things over to Paul to kick us off. So as uh, Lauren said, I'm Paul Group. I'm a service delivery director here at Glidefast. So um, we are going to kind of jump right in here. So today's topic is around the you know, new in Paris current ticket page. Um, and, and, and what they've got kind of coming out in Paris. So one of the, uh, you know, this is kind of looking at what we currently have today. So you can see here we have, you know, just a, a screenshot here of what the current incident, uh, you know, ticket page looks like from the service portal and then also what HR looks like. You know, there's no consistency. The unit, it's not a uniform layout across the platform, which a lot of customers are, are really looking for. They want to make it look like, you know, you're in one place and all looks the same and be able to kind of show and pull in and pull out the different data points and attributes of that ticket. And it's very, you know, it's helpful because each type of ticket, whether it be an HR case or an incident or, you know, anything else, you want to be able to show what's pertinent to that particular one. So in the current world, in order to accomplish that, we have to basically clone the widgets and basically customize them which gives you, you know, additional time for any upgrades. Um, you know, you're breaking potentially out of box features um, for each upgrade. So that's something that really comes along with some technical debt to review during each upgrade. So moving on to what the, the new standard ticket page is. So this is a new feature in uh, the Paris release. You'll see here, you know, same kind of thing. You got the HR ticket, but look how uh, uniform that looks compared to the Insta one. So it gives kind of that, you know, uniformity across the platform for all your different ticket types. And the, and the really cool thing is it's no longer something that you have to customize. It's all configurable now. So down to the different fields um, and attributes from the ticket showing, even to these different tabs, you can see here how, you know, HR has the to do's, uh, you know, listed here, whereas, whereas incident doesn't. And then you have, you know, subject person called out on your HR case where incident, you know, it's just a color. So a lot more configurable, um, a lot less maintenance upgrade, and, and really just a, you know, overall much improved solution. So at this point, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to David to really do a deep dive and, and give you guys a good old demo. Sure. Uh, hey everyone, uh, David Arbor here. Let me share. All righty. Okay, uh, so as Paul uh, stated, I'm just gonna show you guys sort of um, how this setup takes place um, and, and uh, you know, what we can do with a little bit of uh, configuration with the new standard ticket page. Um, so Paul showed you what the, uh, what the ticket page looks like prior to uh, Paris. Um, and like he said, you had to do everything was, was, you know, you had to clone the widget and customize everything if you wanted to change anything. Um, so in, uh, in Paris now, we have what are called these ticket configurations, um, and they are task related only, uh, but they allow you to come in here and, and define a ticket configuration per table. And so out of the box, we have an, an incident one here, right? Um, and so there's different areas of this form. 
um, that correlate with the new uh, with the actual new ticket configuration. So let's go into an incident here in the portal. Okay, so this is what Paul was showing you. Um, this is the new layout. Um, you can see here that in our configuration record, we have regions that are associated with that, uh, that layout. So here is the info region, which is on this tab here. Okay, so it shows you, these are the fields that are showing on it right now. Um, and you can add more uh, and you can show whatever fields you want to on here. Um, and they will show up as, as new fields here. Um, that's pretty basic. Um, if you wanted to, you could get more advanced here and actually uh, uh, create your own widget, um, pass parameters into that widget from directly from your configuration here. Um, and it would display that widget in the info region. So I am going to show you what, it, what a, a custom widget will look like in here, uh, but not here, not in the info region. So we'll leave that as it is. Uh, the next piece is the action region, which is our button here. So right now we have an action of result. So one action. Um, you'll see here I've already replaced this, the widget with uh, a custom widget, which I named incident actions demo. Um, out of the box, you have a um, close incident, reopen incident, and resolve incident. Uh, actions that are part of the out of the box widget. We've added one to provide feedback um, after an incident is resolved. Um, so that's what's in here in this uh, custom widget. I'll also show you um, what we have here. We have in this region, um, which is the tab configurations. So out of the box, you have the activity and attachment tabs that are part of this form. Uh, when, it, when, when you get Paris, that's what ships with it. Uh, we added this resolution information. Um, so just to show you why a little bit here. So if you come in to a ticket here in, with a new layout, and as a customer, let's say I wanted to resolve it, I get an error here because I've not provided a resolution code for closed nodes. So you, know, you, could, you could approach that a couple of ways. Typically, you'd probably set that, that hey, if it's the customer coming in here and doing the resolution of the ticket, we're just gonna set that code to resolve by user and you know, put some generic uh, resolution notes in there. Right, so that's one pathway to do it. But instead of that, we went ahead and created a widget here uh, that'll allow the end user to put in their own resolution code and resolution notes. Um, and again, when we hit resolve, you can see they become uh, mandatory. So all of that's defined, this entire tab, everything is defined in uh, the incident resolution info um, uh, widget that I created here. So this is a custom widget, but it's not a, a clone, or it's not, you don't have to clone anything out of the box. This is just a custom widget that we're popping in here. Uh, so uh, I pulled the same resolution codes that you would see um, on, on the, uh, in the other side on the UI, the uh, Fulfiller UI. Um, we're gonna say closed resolved by caller um, and you know, give it another value here. Um, I'm resolving this because I was able to figure it out on my own. Okay, so a little note there. Um, again, now we should be able to come up here, resolve. So what, what's happening on the back end is rather than you know setting something uh, uh, automatically behind the scenes, this code here is communicating uh, with the incident uh, in the server, on the, the, the server side of the incident, um, and pumping these values into the incident, saving it, and then allowing the action to go through here uh, from the portal. So when we hit resolve, we see now that our state is resolved. And we see our resolution information uh, is here. If we reload, we can see that that does stay in here too. It wasn't just something that we captured sent to the server. We're actually bringing information back from the server as well. Um, so that's how that works. Uh, again, this is uh, this incident resolution info widget that I created for this demo. Oh, by the way, one thing that I found out when, when doing this, you have to have the SNC external and SNC internal roles set on your widgets that you put in this standard ticket page. If you don't have HR or CSM, you can't select those. 
roles. So you have to actually do a clone of a widget that already has those roles if you don't have HR or CSM. At least that's the workaround I found. There may be other ones, but that's what I found. Okay, so um, two other tabs here that we did want to touch up on are the attachments and activity tabs. These ship out of the box. So um, you already have the activities that you have set up in your form view on the fulfiller side uh, will show up here in your activities as well. Now it, it is customer centric. So this is showing additional comments and not work notes because this is customer visible. And attachments, you can drag and drop or uh, you know, pull in the, the old fashioned way. Okay, so now that our incident is resolved, uh, we should have another action here. I'll show you. Again, we added a new tab. Okay, tab's called resolution information. Oh, I'm sorry, I did the wrong one. I apologize. We added a new action widget and it has an extra uh, provide feedback. Okay, so the out of the box. Uh, incident widget basically only has these three resolve incident, reopen incident, close incident. We provided a new one to provide feedback. It's very simple. It's just here for demo purposes, um, but it doesn't show up until it is resolved. So you saw the first time we went through this, all you saw was the resolve uh, action. Now we have one here for provide feedback because this is a resolved incident. So this is going to show whether it's resolved or closed. Okay. So our options here now are closed and provide feedback. So I'm going to show you real quick what we did with the provide feedback. Click it, and we're going to get a, a, a feedback pop-up that comes up. Again, all of this is controlled by that widget uh, that we created for this demo. Uh, so let's say uh, it was average, right? How would you rate your overall experience with us? So what's going to happen here, uh, whenever I hit OK, is it's going to save everything, and you're going to see this show up as a work notes on the incident here in the portal. Um, you can do whatever you want with an action like this. Uh, you could drive a survey off of this. You could, you know, if it comes in poor, you could you could uh, create an incident off of it and have somebody reach back out to that user. Uh, you, you, all sorts of things that you can do with this. We just wanted to demonstrate uh, the fact that you can talk from this incident on the portal to the server um, and, you know, have some action occur behind the scenes uh, based on what we've put in here. So we'll do OK. And we see that our incident has saved and we have a new work note. This says the latest feedback from the customer is average. Um, we can do that again and again and continue to provide feedback in this little example. Uh, there's no stopping it. Um, but again, we just wanted to really show everyone um, what you can kind of do with this. And again, keep in mind, all of this is considered configuration because we've created widgets that we're attaching to this uh, standard ticket page, but we're not actually changing anything that shipped out of the box. Um, so it's a great, uh, really useful um, and maintainable tool uh, that's been added here in Paris. Um, okay, I think that completes my demo. Um, I think, Lauren, we move to some questions and answers. What other types of tabs can be created? Uh, sure. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so in there, the tabs that come out of the box are, um, let me see, there's the activity one that we showed you already uh, that pulls in activities from uh, the actual incident form. There's attachments that we showed you as well. There's a variable editor, uh, which I'm sorry, it's read only. So it's called editor, but it's read only. So that'll bring in variables if you're showing a rhythm. Uh, it'll bring in your variables. And then there's a variable summarizer, which sort of puts the variables in a list rather than in field format. Um, and then the last one is what we showed you today, which is custom. And so when you select custom as your tab type, uh, it gives you a field to put a widget in, and that's where we put our, our custom widget for the um, uh, resolution information tab that we add. Awesome. And maybe you can answer this one as well. Um, what different kind of actions can you add? Sure. Uh, so actions is <laughs> really up to you, right? So I, in the, uh, the widget that I showed you that came out of the box with this tool, you had the, op I mean, the, the close incident, the resolve incident, and reopen incident uh, actions that are all defined within the HTML of that widget that ships with the, uh, with the tool. You can make that widget whatever you want it to be if you're going to replace it with your own widget. So all I did was made the copy of that initial widget, added the provide feedback uh, item in there as, a, as an action, um, 
and uh, went from there. You could add as many as you want. You can put conditions on them to show uh, during certain states or at, at any point during the, the life cycle of the incident. Um, so it's really one of those things where it's uh, completely up to you. But the, the ones that it ships with are the closed incident, reopen incident, and resolved incident. Awesome. And Paul, maybe here's one for you. Uh, when will the Paris release be available? Awesome. Yeah, that's a great question. So Paris release actually released today to general availability. So you can start your upgrades now. Um, and if you are interested, you know, the developer instances, you can uh, upgrade those as well. They, they've had those out there for a while, but if you just want to kind of, you know, get a feel for it, you know, feel free to get a developer instance and, and poke around, but your general availability was actually today. So the Paris release is officially uh, launched. Awesome. That's exciting. Um, and David, I think we got a question coming back from one of your answers. Were the, action, sure. were the actions driven by UI actions from the back end? No, so completely different. So those actions are all defined within that widget that you replace um, and, and drive from there. Um, so all of the code, all of the HTML for each of those actions is set up in that widget only. Awesome. Right, and it looks like we have one more question. Um, will this new standard ticket page be in use right after the upgrade or does a developer have to configure it to be used? Right, so you're going to have it there when you upgrade, it's going to be the, the standard ticket's going to you know be in your instance. Um, but if you're upgrading from uh, something other than like if, you know Orlando, or if, if you're not getting Paris directly, I should say, uh, then there is a plugin for the page route map for standard ticket that you would have to turn on. Uh, but that's the only setup that you're going to have to do um, if you're upgrading and not getting a new instance from Paris. Awesome. Well, that looks like all the questions that came in. So thanks everyone for asking some great questions. Um, and now we are going to announce our winner of the $50 Visa gift card. If we could go to the next slide. Um, and it looks like the winner is Amato Sierra. Congratulations. Um, your gift card will be emailed to you directly with the email that you registered for this webinar with. Um, and if we go to the last slide, I'd just like to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Um, we hope you enjoyed it and learned a bunch of new things, and we hope you're excited for your Paris upgrades. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us on social media or email us at info at glidefast.com. To see more sessions, visit our website, and thanks. Enjoy the rest of the day.